Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for June 22nd, 2023. Well, yesterday we had just a little bit more bearish activity, not a lot, just, whoops, I'm sorry, that's a two-day chart, just pushing down a little bit to test some price support. So what does that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in, let's buckle up, let's get ready for the Thursday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thanks so much for being here. I do truly appreciate it. Let's take a look at these charts and see if we can gain some information about how we may want to approach the market for today. Before we do that, though, just really quick, today is the day. If you haven't registered for the Right Way Options Open House, Thursday and Friday, we'll be, we will be... Throwing the doors open, anybody can come into the room. There's a registration link that will be just right below the title of the video. If you guys want to make your way over there this morning, I'll be getting started right right before the market opens. We'll be getting starting, uh, started and we're going to do uh, two full days of training. So if um, you have some interest or would like to come on over and see what we do over in Right Way Options, love to have you there. Let's take a look at these charts. Boy, we had just a little bit more selling yesterday. I think there was pretty substantial hope yesterday that we would get a bounce back to the upside, but boy, it just didn't come into play, pushing down a little bit. But I gotta tell you, the bears don't really seem all that aggressive here. Um, I personally would like to see them be a little bit more aggressive, but it's just not there. They just don't seem to have the willingness, at least yet. Um, and part of the reason yesterday was just Jerome Powell suggesting, you know, sounding hawkish, suggesting that more rate hikes are on the way, that we're not finished with this hiking cycle, which really disappoints the market because they have tried so hard to predict that they know what the Fed's going to do over and over and over and yet they just continuously are wrong trying to second guess the fed and um we we are likely to see some more challenges in the days ahead as that path forward seems to have become a bit more uncertain in the minds of traders um taking a look um on the bullish or bearish inspiration here today if the bears were to continue to find inspiration well you'll notice we got this price support down in here that we could possibly test and we're headed that way first thing here this morning so watch that closely we could gap down into here and then maybe catch a little bit of a relief bounce up off of that if we don't however if we fall right through that level then our next level down here uh, might be kind of a painful move um, right down into here on um, that chart of the diamond so watch that close if the uh, bulls find inspiration well where can we go well looking at this chart i'm going to suggest maybe right up in here you'll notice we've got a little bit of price resistance and i would say it's somewhere between here and here um, to that upside so somewhere in that range is where we might get that little relief to the upside if um, the bulls come in and bounce and that'd be a pretty good bounce to be honest if they could push through there then of course we'll be looking for a retest of that resistance up here which we just continue to struggle with and we have for some time we just haven't been able to break through that area for uh, months and months and months if we take a look at our um, spiders, well, the spiders pulled back again yesterday as well, and largely because big tech really started to see a little bit of pressure in the selling. Um, for the first time in some time, we're showing just a little bit of weakness in tech. As a matter of fact, if you look at um, Google, Google kind of breaking some support here in this chart and showing a little bit of bearishness um, for that downside move. So watch that closely as we see some of those big tech soften up just a little bit. But that being said, there is nothing wrong technically here in this chart. This has been an overbought um, index and it needed a rest. This is a healthy pullback, at least at the moment. So as we pull back, I'm gonna look for a support level right in here if those bulls 
uh, or excuse me, bears continue to find inspiration. Look for price support, and that's on that big breakout. We made that breakout and then just zoomed up from that point. And so it, we'll watch and see if we can hold that level. If they cannot hold that level, if that level breaks, then I'm gonna suggest that possibility that we could come down into here, catching that support either there or off the bottom of that uh, little consolidation area in the chart. If the bulls find inspiration and we bounce off of that little support area, well, once again, I'm gonna push this up here right about into this area. Notice we've got four little candles right in here, kind of testing this area right here. If we could um, bounce off of this and push back up, that would be the first test. And if we can bounce through that or push on through that, of course, then we're right up here testing the highs again in uh, the chart. So watch carefully for that. If we, um, by the way, don't be too surprised if we just have to rest. Um, we, we don't have to have these big swinging moves. We could just kind of start to rest and build a bit of a consolidation zone as we wait for the next quarter of earnings. Let's take a look at our QQQ. QQQ pulling back again. Um, QQQ had the hardest day yesterday, pulling back a full five points. Um, but it's also the most um, overextended index out there. So pulling back in here, I think is a healthy thing for the NASDAQ to do. Certainly no technical damage in the chart. Um, looking at this chart, I'm gonna suggest um, support level would be right down in here at this point. Um, if the bears were to find um, that bearish activity um, to push down into here, if they fail through this area, well, as you can see, probably the next area price support would be down in there. That would be a pretty painful move, uh, particularly for those that kind of chased into um, the tech sector right into that area. Now, once again, keep in mind, um, we've got a ways to go before we hit the next round of earnings, and it really wouldn't be too much of a surprise to build some kind of a choppy zone range in here as we kind of move toward next quarter earnings. So watch that carefully. If the bulls find inspiration, well, I'm gonna push this up and say, right through that area right there. Notice we've got those four candles, kind of actually more than four or five candles laying out a little bit of resistance area in the chart. So if the bulls find inspiration here this morning, bouncing off of an area, then look for a test up in here. If they can push on through, then we're headed back up to maybe test those highs once again. If we've got, um, a, taking a look at the IWM, IWM has been holding in there pretty strongly. We, we continue in this consolidating um, area, but a little bit more on the bearish side here, as you can see, just not a lot of strength here on the bulls or bear side. They're just sitting on the sidelines, taking a little bit of breather. Uh, here in the market. So let's watch that closely. If the bears do continue to push and we um, really uh, were right at the cusp of breaking that support level, if that were to really snap, then I think we're gonna come down into here and it could happen relatively quickly if that were to happen. If um, that were to um, fail, then I'm looking at this level right here in the chart. So watch carefully for that. If the bulls continue to find inspiration, we continue to hold in this area, well then you'll look right across here and you can see we've got a little tiny bit of price resistance right in there. We may pop up in there testing that and you can see we've got a couple little small levels in here um, in the middle of that range. And if they can pop through that, well, then we're right back here up here testing that resistance where once again, we've struggled um, with that area for uh, many months now. So watch that close. Let's take a look at our VIX. Boy, I got to tell you, the VIX is absolutely nonsensical right now. The QQQ fell by five points yesterday and the VIX dropped. Um, suggesting there is no fear in the market, despite the fact that the Fed is raising rates. This is a, almost nonsensical anymore, the way the VIX is acting, because we move up when the market fear increases, when the market moves up, no fear when the market moves down, which is completely backwards of normal. And I think this index is gonna have to be completely revamped 
because the high speculation trading um, and the uh, about 40% of the market being zero data expiration options trading has changed the dynamics of this so dramatically it, it it's becoming uh, like I say, uh, nonsensical. So um, I don't know that we can count much on this. But one thing I would, would say is concerning the market conditions and the economic conditions that we see out there, this is showing us an extreme complacency um, here in the market and um, suggests uh, problems could be um, not that far away here for us in the market. If we take a look at our T2122, well, T2122 had a pretty good day rallying back up yesterday. At one point in time, we were up here kind of testing the limits of that resistance right there. But the selling right at the end of the day pushed us back down just a little tiny bit. So if the bulls find inspiration in the chart, I would suggest that we've got some upside room here that we can move if we can find that inspiration. So we've opened up that door. And if the bears were to engage and find inspiration, well, just keep in mind, we've opened up, a, uh, we've got a big um, opportunity for the downside if the bears were to engage. So watch carefully for that remember t2122 doesn't tell us which way the market's going to go it only tells us those pressure points in the market and it's most consistent it's best used when we're in overbought or oversold conditions in the market um, to help us know when it's time to switch directions uh, let's take a look at our t2108 now t2108 rallied just a little tiny bit so you got to give this to the bulls yesterday Yesterday, they were pumping this just a little tiny bit to the upside right in there about 60% of the stocks holding above their 40 day moving average. Remember, we're in that frothy zone up here somewhere between 60 and 75 is kind of that frothy zone where we're, we've probably pushed a little bit too hard too fast. We might need a little bit more rest here. But right now, there's nothing in this chart that says bearishness. It's holding in there strong. We've got resistance above, however, and we've got substantial resistance below if the bears were to engage. If we take a look at our T2107, well, T2107 didn't do as well yesterday. A little bit of pullback. We had 48% of our stocks holding above the 200 day moving average. So you kind of have to give that one to the bears. But having said that, notice we've got a nice little price support here on the chart. So no harm, no foul here, at least at this point. Bears um, just don't seem to have the willingness to engage uh, too heavily yet. So watch that. If the bulls were to engage, well, let's keep in mind, we, we've got a resistance level that we're building up here. So watch that close, closely. And anything in the 50 to 65 area of T2107 uh, is really pushing us into that kind of overbought situation in the market. So we'll want to watch that close. T2101 is also interesting in the fact that it has shown no turn yet. Um, our menta, momentum has been dropping pretty substantially here. But usually if we're going to get a turn or relief rally in the market, we would see this start to hook where we would hook over and say, OK, now we're going to shift the other direction. So far, no hook on that, suggesting maybe uh, the, that um, lowering momentum may still have a little bit more downside uh, to it. And we're seeing that this morning in the pre-market. Let's take a look at our economic calendar here for today. Now, our economic calendar, we've got several things on here to be paying attention to. It's our busiest day so far uh, for the market. We've got uh, Walker's already spoken this morning. We've got jobless claims, Chicago Fed activity, current account, existing home sales. These two are the most notable, your jobless claims, existing home sales. And then we've got Jerome Powell speaking again. We've got Mester out there on her farewell tour um, once again speaking. We've got leading indicators, natural gas, and petroleum status here. And then as we wind down through the end of the day, we've got some bond auctions and then, of course, the Fed balance sheet. Those bonds haven't been helping us. As a matter of fact, the 210 inversion is continuing to get worse. We were at the close of the day yesterday 
only three basis points away from being um, inverted by 100 basis points in the 210. Um, not a good situation and it continues to point to um, recession. When that recession really starts to pick up, I don't know, but I have not seen any evidence in, from the Fed um, site, if you go to the Fred site and look, I have not seen any evidence of any time when we've had an inversion like this that we didn't in a recession. So be prepared for that possibility. It could be around the corner at any time and it'll start showing up in, possibly in some of these data points um, relatively soon. Um, let's take a look here. We've got a PMI uh, data point coming in here on Friday and then uh, Mester once again uh, as we look toward our Friday. Let's take a look at our earnings calendar today and our earnings calendar is a little bit busier today. We've got a few more to cover this morning. Um, let's take a look. Um, we've got um, CAN. Oh, wait a second. I don't think that's correct well let me move on here um, i'm gonna have to make a correction on that um we've got um d-o-o-o -O -O will be reporting today we've got uh darden uh, looks like darden um, disappointed here this morning moving lower uh kind of breaking that big upside trend that it had uh cmc will also be reporting today. Keep an eye on that. Looks like they've got a little bit of a pop going here. Watch that resistance right in here. If that's gonna be a good report, that may finally change this to an upside move on CMC. Um, um, FDS, FDS um, also trying to get a little bit of a pop this morning, or FedEx trying to get a little bit of a pop this morning. Um, worth, why did I do FDX? FDS. There we go, that's the one we want. FDS reporting today, watch that carefully in here. Um, could be breaking um, that resistance if we can get a little bit of bullishness going in that chart. We've got GMS on the calendar here today. Looks like they're popping through to the upside. Nice upside trend, looking good. New highs here in GMS. And SWBI, SWBI would be the other one on that list that we would want to be paying attention to. Let me just take a quick second, if you guys don't mind. Um, I want to look at the economic calendar again because I made a mistake um, on that. Um, it's ACN, yeah, ACN. ACN reporting today and um, I'm dyslexic because I typed it as C-A-N. So ACN, you'll want to be paying attention to here this morning. Um, um, looks like they have disappointed on their earnings. So we've got a little mix of data today. How about we take a look at a few stocks that could be setting up. But before we do that, guys, if you could do me that quick favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube, click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video. Also make sure to click those thumbs up buttons, leave a brief comment that helps the channel to continue to grow thank you so much big shout out to everyone who does do that i truly truly appreciate it now keeping in mind i, I missed um, i got kind of busy in conversation yesterday helping some traders um in right way options and didn't get a chance to um, answer those comments yesterday also keep in mind that with the um, open house here i am going to be slammed busy for the next couple of days so there's a real good chance i might not get a chance to answer those comments but thank you so much to those of you that continue to comment i do truly appreciate it and i will get back to those and read those um, when i kind of catch my breath here after this open house so um Let's take a look at some of these stocks setting up. And remember guys, these aren't recommendations to buy or sell any security. You're gonna to have to do your own due diligence. Be very, very careful here in this market because anything is really possible as we work through some of these data points. Uh, first off, let's take a look at the financial financials. Um, we know that higher rates uh, tend to have a negative effect on our banks. 
and our lending. And we're seeing just a little bit of pressure here in XLF, um, particularly this morning. We've been trying to bounce around, certainly the narrative but from the talking heads is, oh, everything's great, everything's good, nothing to see here. But I'm not sure it's all that uh, all that true. So watching right in here, we've got a little bit of a support area. We're struggling against this resistance in XLF. Um, if we were to fall down below that support, well, I think there may be a shorting opportunity um, there in XLF. But watch it closely. If we can, we could bounce around in this consolidation range and still move on higher. I'm not saying that I know which way this is going to go. I'm just saying I would watch that carefully. And there's also the hint in um, in um, oh, whoops, not R T H, um, K R E. KRE that there's a little bit of pressure here in the regional banks and you can see they've given up this upside trend we're breaking down below this support area in the chart right through there breaking that down got a little bit more support right in here to maybe try and hold us in that chart but as we look at those rates potentially going up and we see bonds uh, yields moving to the upside that's creating more and more pressure here on those regional banks so keep a close eye on that now uh, something interesting that happened yesterday we had popped up we held real strong in UUP but then we heard that the Bank of England's probably going to be raising rates um, because their inflation is too hot. Europe is talking about they're going to continue to raise rates. And if the, since the U.S. has stopped raising rates, at least for a month, um, that's weakening the U.S. dollar. And you can see we're moving to a downside move here. That was a pretty strong move yesterday in that dollar and looking just a tiny little bit lower here this morning. So if the U.S. dollar continues to weaken, let's take a look at what uh, that could do to energy. If we take a look at XLE. XLE found a little bit of buy support right in here. Now this is really being dependent on what China does. Are they going to actually stimulate? China's economy is struggling hard and uh, they are looking at maybe moving back into money printing already over there to try and stimulate the economy and get things moving. And that, of course, would raise their demand for um, oil and gas. So watch that closely. We had this bounce off of this downtrend. Um, I'm going to be watching this closely in here because if that were to fail in here, that's going to be really a problem, I think, for um, for the oil sector. If this can hold in here and start rallying back up, then we might be in good shape and there might be some buy opportunities in there. If you take a look at some of the um, stocks out there, ConocoPhillips still holding in a pretty decent pattern, nice little upside trend in here, trying to break through some of this resistance in the chart. We have snuck out from underneath that uh, downtrend here in the chart. So there are a few out there that are starting to show little bits of sign that they may have some levity in them. So watch that close. And then if we look at the natural gas side, now I have a bias in this because I am holding a position in natural gas. And um, I actually added to that position yesterday. If those bulls and, and the dollar continues to weaken, natural gas could pop up through here and break some of that resistance to the upside. Notice we're kind of building this nice base in here. Certainly not suggesting this is ready for prime time yet or that this is just going to rip to the upside. But I do think it is worth paying attention to. On that bond front, take a look at TLT here. TLT sneaking out from underneath that downtrend creating that little bit of an uptrend in here we got a nice little pattern forming if that were to rest out here um, I'll probably be adding uh, to uh, TLT if that completes that pattern out there so keep a close eye on that you might also want to be keeping an eye on um, some of the food commodity type things. Take a look at um, CF. CF moving up nicely here, breaking that downtrend. Any rest or pullback now sets up. And remember, as the dollar falls, food commodities tend to go higher. Nice little inverted head and shoulders pattern here as well 
on CF. Keep an eye on that one. Wheat, my goodness, rocket ship ride here on wheat. I've been waiting for a resting pullback on this. I am not going to chase it. This is being driven by both the dollar falling and that threat that um, Vladimir Putin may shut off or um, break his agreement in allowing wheat exports out of the Ukraine. So watch that carefully here. That needs a rest before I would have any interest in, in purchasing it. But it is something to pay attention to as we start to see some of those commodity prices moving up with the dollar falling. So with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. Thanks for being here. I look forward to seeing you all over in the Right Way Options open house. Make sure you click that link just below the title of the video and register and we'll see you over there. I'll kick off today um, just right before the market opens and we're going to dig in for two days of what I hope to be really good quality education. I'll answer a lot of questions for you and see if I can help you uh, uh, in those two days improve your trading or some give you some ideas on how you can improve your trading. With that, have a great day, and I wish you all the best.